Bill, this article by Jeff Zwierink. He's got his BS in physics and a PhD in astrophysics with a focus on gamma rays from Iowa State. Uh, he also is with Reasons to Believe. Gives us a chance to brush up on our Big Bang. And uh, he writes in this article, the James Webb Space Telescope, the amazing clarity of this new telescope will help scientists better understand how the universe developed from the Big Bang until now. However, one claim based on some of the early images generated controversy and quite a bit of publicity, specifically physicist and science writer Eric Lerner argued that the Webb telescope shows the Big Bang didn't happen. And this isn't the first time Lerner has disputed uh, the Big Bang. Are you familiar with him, Bill? Only secondarily, Kevin. I, I mean, to tell the truth, he is such a marginal figure that I don't think it's worth spending valuable time on. The article continues, Eric Lerner's claim is nothing new. In fact, he articulated his claim 30 years ago in his book, The Big Bang Never Happened, a startling refutation of the dominant theory of the origin of the universe. Instead of gravity driving the large scale dynamics of the, the universe, as in Big Bang cosmology, Lerner's plasma cosmology has electromagnetic forces dominating. According to Lerner, if plasma physics governs the formation of galaxies, stars, and all the features of the universe, the universe would have no beginning. And Lerner uh, asserts that the Big Bang add-ons of dark matter and dark energy are unnecessary in his model, end of quote. Then continuing, uh, he says, as one might expect, the scientific community responded by acknowledging and addressing both the data Lerner used to argue against Big Bang cosmology, as well as the evidence used to support his model. Lerner's recent statements argue that the new web images refute the Big Bang and match the predictions of his plasma cosmology. However, we need to exercise caution. The strongest evidence for Big Bang cosmology arises from observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation and from measurements of the distance redshift relationship obtained by observing galaxies throughout the universe. None of the Webb telescope images impact this evidence. First, the Webb telescope was not designed and has no capacity to observe the cosmic microwave background. Second, uh, this, the telescope was designed to investigate the distant galaxies at high redshift to study their properties. None of the current Webb telescope data undermines the copious evidence that redshift systematically increases with distance. Uh, the telescope has found some distant galaxies that are larger and more developed than expected in many Big Bang models. But Lerner claims these galaxy observations invalidate Big Bang models while matching predictions of his plasma cosmology. Well, Bill, you may want to go over cosmic microwave background for us, as well as a reminder of what the red shift is. Sure. There are three principal lines of evidence in support of the expansion of the universe from a Big Bang. The first is the red shift in the light emanating from distant galaxies. In 1929, the American astronomer uh, Edwin Hubble discovered through tireless observations in the Mount Wilson Observatory that wherever he trained his telescope in the night sky, he observed that the light coming from distant galaxies is shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. And Hubble took this to be indicative of the recessional velocity of these galaxies. As they move away from us, the light coming from them is stretched and so shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. And the universal red shift that Hubble observed was taken to be confirmatory of the prediction of an expanding universe that had been made in the early 20s by Alexander Friedman and Georges Lemaitre. In 1965, two scientists working for the Bell Telephone Laboratories, A.A. A. Penzias and R.W. Wilson, 
discovered a low-grade microwave background uh, radiation that they could not get rid of. Uh, and it turned out that the entire universe is permeated with this microwave radiation, the same kind of radiation that is in your microwave oven at home. And this was explained as being the light that was emitted from a very early, very hot and dense state of the universe, which has now been shifted into the microwave region of the spectrum. So this was a dramatic confirmatory evidence that the universe uh, has evolved from an early, hot, and very dense state. Thirdly, the heavy elements like carbon and iron are synthesized in the interior of stars. And then when the stars explode, these heavy elements are distributed throughout the universe where they form uh, planets and organisms on those planets. But the very light elements like helium and deuterium cannot be synthesized in the stellar interiors. Rather, these were apparently synthesized in the very dense, very hot, early conditions present at the Big Bang. And so these three lines of independent evidence uh, make it plausible that, in fact, the universe not only is expanding, but originated in this extremely dense, extremely hot early state, somewhere around 13.8 billion years ago. Now, the observation of the James Webb Telescope of mature galaxies much, much earlier in the history of the universe than expected does call into serious question some of our models of galactic evolution. Um, you've got to explain how these galaxies were able to form so soon after the Big Bang rather than um, billions of years later. And that is the challenge that remains. It doesn't call into question the Big Bang, but the data does call into question our models of galactic evolution. Zwerry continues, quoting, One should remember that these types of discrepancies occur rather frequently in science. For most of the 1970s, 80s, and into the 90s, astronomers couldn't even agree whether the universe was closer to 10 billion years old or 20 billion years old because different measurement techniques uh, gave different ages. During my scientific career, he says, I have read published papers with star dates older than the age of the universe. Cosmic structures too large to form given the universe's age and measurements showing the cosmic microwave background as too smooth to form stars, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies. Interestingly, that last item was part of the evidence that prompted Lerner to develop his alternative cosmology model. Yet in every example just listed, further research by the scientific community resulted in a better, more precise understanding of Big Bang cosmology. We now know that quantum fluctuations in the earliest moments of the universe produced the necessary ripples in the cosmic microwave background that ultimately developed into the structure seen in the universe. End of quote there. So, Bill, uh, if the cosmic microwave background is too smooth, then stars and galaxies wouldn't form. We, we need ripples. We need the ripple effect. Yeah. Um, Zwering's main point is that these kinds of anomalies regularly crop up in science. And so we shouldn't be too alarmed when we find anomalous results. What usually happens is that they get ironed out in time. And I think he's confident that these uh, observations of mature galaxies very early in the history of the universe will be uh, resolved. But the cosmic microwave background radiation is incredibly homogeneous or smooth to one part out of 100,000 or so. And there need to be little inhomogeneities which provide, as it were, the seeds 
which then can gravitationally attract matter to them and over time eventually form into galaxies. And so the discovery that there are, in fact, these inhomogeneities was uh, taken to confirm that the galaxies did, in fact, evolve from such a primordial condition. You know, Bill, I, I think this is a lot of the point of this article, even though, as you say, perhaps Lerner's uh, theory and his work uh, it, in this area, in the Big Bang, it does not need to be taken that seriously. Nevertheless, when it gets into the literature, when it uh, uh, is presented, then uh, the scientists have an opportunity to shore up the current model or yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I first began reading cosmology, there was a maverick scientist named Halton Arp who... Uh, regularly cataloged anomalous red shifts that would show the universe is not uh, expanding uh, evenly uh, as was commonly believed and would even claim that he detected some galaxies that had blue shifts. And Arp was a top astronomer. He was a good man and he, he made many observations. But in fact, now all of these anomalies have been ironed out uh, with further study. And, and Zvirink, I think, uh, expresses the kind of confidence that is born out of that e experience. Bill, here's Jeff's conclusion. Uh, he says, scientists routinely produce alternative models like Eric Lerner's. Even with the tremendous experimental success of general relativity, a number of scientists favor a different approach known as MOND, where they modify Newtonian dynamics. Often, MOND and general relativity calculations can both explain the data produced by observations of the universe. The fact that MOND solves the dark matter or dark energy problem by making them unnecessary makes MOND attractive to many scientists. That solution comes at the expense of MOND not providing a mechanism for explaining why gravity works. General relativity provided that mechanism as arising from the curvature of space-time. Thus, for most scientists, MOND introduces a larger problem than it solves. Lerner's plasma cosmology suffers a similar problem. Even if plasma cosmology predicted the cosmic background, uh, the cosmic microwave background, as well as the galaxy shapes and clustering, and evolution with equal proficiency to Big Bang cosmology, it offers no workable explanation for the well-established redshift distance relationship. Big Bang cosmology provides a simple explanation. The universe is expanding. The latest web telescope images don't justify the enormous attention Lerner's model has recently received in the public sphere. Yet Lerner's plasma cosmology deserves a place at the table of models trying to explain our universe, science advances when theory matches observation. End of quote. Bill, looks like uh, the red shift is a big ingredient in the Big Bang cake. Yeah, you know. it is critically important, Kevin. The irony of what Zvirink says here is that I don't think that the four-dimensional uh, space-time interpretation of general relativity does give an explanation of why gravity works. Uh, I think this four-dimensional geometrical representation of space-time is just a heuristic device. It's, uh, and, and to interpret that realistically is just a gratuitous piece of metaphysics. Uh, no less a physicist than the Nobel Prize winner, uh, Steven Weinberg, has said construing gravitation in terms of uh, the warping of four-dimensional space-time actually inhibits scientific progress because it prevents us from exploring gravitation as a force, just like the other forces of nature, like electromagnetism, strong force, and weak force. And so I'd really be interested in hearing more about this M-O-N-D. I'm not familiar with that. This is uh, stands for Modified Newtonian Dynamics. 
And this is a hypothesis that proposes a modification of Newton's law of gravitation to account for the observed properties of galaxies. And this uh, piqued my interest because in my own work, I found that certain scientists have been able to show that Newtonian physics can recover all of the predictions of general relativistic cosmology, and they can do it simpler, with a simpler mathematics. So this MOND uh, sounds to me as though it could be very interesting, and I'd like to learn more about it. Bill, as we wrap up the podcast today, the Big Bang model has just really held up uh, against alternative models and other things. seems to be remaining on firm ground. Yes, Kevin. Ever since it was first proposed in the very early 1920s by Friedman and Lemaitre, there has been a parade of failed attempts to craft cosmogonic models of the universe that would avoid the absolute beginning predicted by the standard Big Bang model. And over and over again, those models have been shown to be either mathematically inconsistent or to fail to explain the empirical data. Uh, and with each failure, the, the, the Big Bang model uh, and its prediction of a beginning of the universe at a point in the finite past has been confirmed. 